Hey guys, it's Kevin again, and in this video I'm going to be reviewing to The Blacklist Season 1, Episode 12, The Alchemist. By far, this was the best episode of the season. I know I said the same thing last week, but this one we got some really big reveals and stuff, so there's actually a lot more going on now in the show. Um, there is, was more than two plots in this episode, which I really did like, and, um... This was just a really great episode, especially the ending. I'm really interested in seeing where the ending is going. And I kind of like how the case is not just becoming a one case thing. It's actually going to, you know, carry itself over because I'm definitely interested in seeing where the, um, you know, where these cases are going to go. A lot of people are starting to talk about the blacklist on um, what is this whole thing with the blacklist. In my opinion, I think it's basically, you know, at first I thought it was because of her, him being, um, Liz Liz's father, but now we know he's not her, her father, basically, pretty much, well, they pretty much confirmed that he's, he's not her father, um, I mean, they haven't exactly confirmed it, but we pretty much, for them, we think he's not her father, so, um, now I think it's because he actually wants to be top dog, and he wants to be number one, so he doesn't want anyone else in his way, so, uh, let's just get to the episode. So we start off right where the last one left off. Uh, Red is explaining to Liz about the new blacklister, which is the alchemist. Now the alchemist is uh, this person who he's been hired to protect some mob boss named Peter, and uh, he we see him drug this woman, and somehow, and this is just really weird. I didn't understand how this was going to work at first, but then I really liked it. I really like this concept. It's really cool, but it's also very strange. Um, Somehow this guy is able to transform his victims to look like the people he wants to protect. We see this uh, transformed woman and some man. They've also been transformed and they die in a plane crash. So I don't know how he does this or whatever, but I definitely thought this was very, very cool. Uh, so the FBI, they find the body and they think they are the mobster and his wife and they want to know how Red thinks the mobster uh, disappeared. So Red and Liz, they have a meeting. It is in a synagogue, and Red refuses to go to the FBI black site until the mole is found, and Red insists that the mobster is still alive and that the alchemist is an expert in making people appear to be dead. He tells Liz that the mobster is now in Hungary, so Liz, Red, Resler, and Malik go to um, investigate. They catch the bad guy, proving that the alchemist is able to convincingly, convincingly fake the death of anyone he is protecting. So back at home, uh, Liz and Tom talk about um, Tom's job. Oh, we'll get to that in the other, when we get to the other part. The FBI figure out that the alchemist is able to take uh, fake DNA. It is all very scientific. Uh, Red tells Liz that if she finds the alchemist, she'll be able to find a bunch of really bad people who he has helped to disappear. Uh, our Aram figures out that the latest alchemist victim was using an online dating site. So the alchemist actually meets with the wife of the mobster, and he wants to clean up this mess. She tells him the name of her husband's lawyer, and then he kills her. He just, he kills her. So, I don't know what the whole motive of this alchemist is. I didn't really know what he was going to do, but, um, this was definitely very interesting. So the FBI then begins to question the mobster. The mobster's lawyer shows up. He's, it is really the alchemist. So the alchemist gets the mobster alone. He poisons the man. The FBI uses the dating website to find a photo of the alchemist. They're, they're able to, uh, I, they're able to ID him. He is a disgraced DNA scientist. Liz goes to visit the alchemist's ex-wife. She says her ex still thinks they're together and he visits her sometimes. And uh, Liz and Resler figure out that they might be able to find the alchemist by the DNA sequencing equipment he has bought. Meanwhile, we see the alchemist finding his next victim, a female actress looking for a part. Then, uh, something happens. We see this, uh, this woman. Um, and I'll, I'll get to that in a second, but this is definitely very interesting. I don't know, I'll get to that in a second, but um, it's definitely very interesting. So yeah, we, he's, he, there's this female actress looking for a part. The FBI find the alchemist hideout, but everything incrimin incriminating has been cleaned out. They go to his ex-wife's house and they find both the, um, the wife and the alchemist's daughter dead with gunshot wounds to their head. And, um, so this is definitely, uh, really interesting the way this worked. He, he had put them in the store. The last time we saw them, they were in a store. And he basically, they, they were in a store and, you know, they didn't know what was going to happen. It looked like he was about to kill his daughter, but, um... You know, before anything else could happen, uh, you know, they try, it 
It does not take long for Liz to find to figure out the same thing that the alchemist has actually taken his wife and kid, faked their deaths. Liz figures out they can track the insulin pump the daughter uses, and the FBI uses it to figure out where the alchemist has taken them. The cops corner the alchemist at a convenience store, though he has hostages and his daughter is accidentally shot. Um, so Liz tries to negotiate with the alchemist, but he gets shot and killed before they can cut a deal. Um, because he tried to pull a gun on them, so you pull a gun on someone, you die. That's just how it works with the police. You pull a gun on them, you die. Uh, so the FBI is able to get a list of the alchemist's clients um, off one of his computer's hard drives, and when Liz takes it to Red, he pockets the list and leaves. His motivation for telling the FBI about the alchemist was to get the alchemist's client list. This was definitely really cool. I, I think this alchemist thing, you know, Red does want a client, so this is going to come back. So, meanwhile, Red is trying to find the mole. Let's just get into Red trying to find this mole. Um... He's meeting with some hackers who are helping him to figure out who the mole is in the FBI. The hackers are friends with Wilkers, found Julian Assange, and Red is a care package for Julian. Um, so he's he's just he's very determined to find this mole and everything. And uh, they they really didn't show a lot of this, although we did see that the uh, Red hackers have found a decor a doc, uh, doc found a document that seems to incriminate Agent Malik Malik. How are you pronouncing Malik Malik? We don't get to see enough of the document to know what it says, but we do find out at the end exactly what it said. Uh, eventually, Liz finds out also that uh, the only reason that Red had her do this was because he was so he could find them all. And then we get to the very big scene, which I absolutely loved. Uh, I thought this next scene was so intense, and I really loved it. It's when Red is confronting Agent Malik at her home, and he says, You know why I'm here, he says, and she replies, You're here to kill me because I am the mole. And that's her reply. And I doubt he's gonna kill her. She's a she's a very big character now, and she really is serves a big purpose now that we know that she is the mole. And um she's a character they can do a lot more with, so I don't think they're going to really um kill her. It, it looks like actually Red is gonna try to cut a deal with her in the next episode. That's what it looks like is gonna happen. So I'm definitely interested in seeing where this is gonna go. Believe it or not though, we actually had one other really big thing that came in this episode that I'm really interested in talking about because it, we kind of, this episode was very different from any other episode of The Blacklist because normally in The Blacklist we have the case and then what Red is doing. In this episode we kind of expanded into Liz and Tom's life and I really enjoyed seeing this. Um, as you know, Liz and Tom are trying to, uh, basically, Tom is trying to get Liz to leave and, you know, stop all the missions and everything. But Tom and Liz, uh, actually we find out that Liz is actually pregnant, uh, which is pretty big that we find out that she's pregnant. And, um, um, they're talking about his interview and he tells her he didn't go through the interview because he didn't want to make her give up on her job. And... They end up going to this baby shower, but before this baby shower had happened, something really big. We saw this woman uh, looking at a file on Tom. She seems to be up to no good. We see her face, and it looks like that woman Lucy Brooks. Remember the woman Lucy Brooks that Red had looked up in the FBI's uh, criminal database uh, several episodes ago? Well, now she calls herself Jolene. Um, Tom and Liz are attending a baby shower with a bunch of Tom's teaching friends. They play games, putting diapers on dolls, tasting baby food, and it all leads to Liz and Tom getting into a huge fight about why she would not take maternity leave. And the fight is interrupted when Jolene actually starts to talk to them. And uh, I really like, she's really, uh, she was hired to stir up trouble. I don't know what she was hired for, but whatever she did, it was to stir up trouble because that's exactly what she does. She basically, she's pretending to be a substitute teacher at Tom's school, and she and Tom actually chat a bunch, and they end up actually hitting it off really, really well, to the point where Liz is definitely getting jealous of them. I would not be surprised if Liz is jealous of them, because definitely she has a right to be, because this girl is basically stealing Tom from her. And Tom and Liz, just, they hit it off. I mean, Tom and this uh, Jolene girl, they hit it off right away. So I definitely think there's more to uh, um, Jolene than what we think. Um, because at the very end of the episode, uh, Liz was actually working late. She misses this uh, special dinner for, with Tom. And he goes out to see a photography exhibit with Jolene instead. So now he, I kind of this feeling that Tom might actually... Um, cheat on Liz or something, or maybe uh, Tom might actually start going with Jolene, or here's what else I'm thinking. 
I think now we're starting to see that Tom is actually not the bad guy. Maybe he's working for Jolene. Maybe Jolene wants to give him something. Uh, you know, what is her motive, basically? We don't really know at this point, but I'm definitely interested in seeing. What I really love about this episode is that it's just very different from any other episode we've gotten. You know, we now know who the mole is. We have now actually have this alchemist case kind of spread out because it's, it's definitely going to have an impact down the line because Red does need someone from his client list, so... I, I suspect that Lucy Brooks, you know, aka Jolene, is one of those people on the list. So I'm assuming Lucy Brooks is this Jolene girl because she seems definitely like the type of person who, you know, is what she's saying is complete bullshit. I could just tell what she was saying is not true. And all she's trying to do is cut some sort of a deal with Tom. So let me know what you guys saw this episode. Overall, in my opinion, this was, again, a really great episode, really solid episode of The Blacklist. I think, really, they're doing better and better every episode with this show. It's just getting just so good, and this was such a great episode. I loved every I loved every minute of this episode. It was so intense in some scenes. Like, the scene with the alchemist in the convenience store, definitely that scene was very intense. I did not know what was going to happen in that scene, but it was very well executed. Also, um, I really like this Jolene plot. Uh, what do you think her motive is, really? Is she clearly, she's clearly targeting Tom for something, um, nefarious. Uh, is Tom not the bad guy? I'm starting to think he's not the bad guy after all. It seems like he actually genuinely cares about Liz, and maybe Jolene is gonna try to convince him something. Um, you know, he's, is he just caught in some... Something that he really can't get himself out of that he doesn't want Liz to know about. Um, also, um, also, uh, Red, do you think now he's found the mole, do you think he's going to try to cut a deal with Malik? I, I would not be surprised if he tries to cut a deal with Agent Malik. He seems like the kind of person who would cut a deal with her. Um, that's it for my review, though. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Um, okay, bye.